All right, what are we gonna do today? Today we're gonna solve problem a three, a zero, an eight, a zero. Mark elements on array by performing queries. Okay, so this problem is pretty straightforward. You just gotta be very careful about how you're gonna manage certain situations in order to ensure that you properly account for the information that you're looking for. Okay, now I don't know what the correct classification is for, well, I under, this, this problem uses priority queues, but this is one of those problems where you're given like a situation and then you're given a bunch of queries, right? So you have to find the answer for each of the queries. And since there might be like 10 to the five queries, you need the queries to be extremely fast in order for you to not, uh, you know, get a time limit exceeded, right? So usually these kind of problems where it's like, there's a situation and then you have queries based on the situation, kind of follow a pretty well-defined pattern, which is like you pre-process the situation so that you can make it efficient. You run through each of the queries and then you return the answer, okay? But there's some pre-processing and there's some efficient process that you use to answer each of the queries. Enough rambling, let's go ahead and get right into it, okay? So you're given a zero indexed array nums of size n consisting of positive integers, okay? You're also given a 2D array queries of size M where queries I equals index I and K of I. Okay, so you know you have an array and then you have queries, right? And that's given here, right? You have queries and you have this array nums. Initially, all elements of the array are unmarked, okay? Unmarking something, unmarking something means that, you know, you didn't account for it in some way, you mark it, okay? You need to apply M queries on the array in order where on the ith query, you do the following. You mark the element of index i if it is not already marked. Okay, so you have to mark the index and then mark ki unmarked elements in the array with the smallest values. If multiple such elements exist, mark the ones with the smallest indices. And if less than ki unmarked elements exist, then mark all of them. Okay, so basically you have to mark the thing associated with the index and then you have to mark ki other things. Right, so you definitely mark the thing at the index and then you mark the ki other things. And which ki other things do you mark? You mark the smallest elements in your array that are remaining. Okay, return an array of size m where answer i is the sum of unmarked elements in the array after the ith query. Okay, so another little side point is that sometimes the queries are independent uh, on the, depending on the question and other times the queries are dependent, meaning that, you know, the query before you might modify the array, right? Like in this situation, the query before you could mark the element. So at the current element, right, it's dependent on whatever the previous um, queries were, right? And that's why you have, this is, there's a stipulation, right? You need to do it in order, right? Because the previous queries might have marked certain elements. So now on this query, I have to consider that in terms of what's going to get marked and what the sum, new sum's going to be. Okay, now if that doesn't make sense, this this example, right? We're gonna return a array of size M where the answer I is the sum of the unmarked elements in the array after the ith query. Okay, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Basically, all we're doing here is we're, you know, we're figuring out the sum after each query, right? And this and the sum is all the elements that are unmarked. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so for example, we have nums equals one, two, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, ah, two, one, two, two, one, two, three, one. All right. And then we have uh, our queries equaling, where's my query? Look at that, this new, this new freaking leak code setting doesn't even, I can't even see the whole thing. I have to expand it. It doesn't, who made this man? All right, well, I'm gonna have to do it like this for a second, guys, sorry. Queries equals one, two, I'm gonna write it out, then we'll move over. I still understand why they update things sometimes. Like, it didn't need to be updated. There was nothing wrong with the old format. There was nothing wrong with the old look, it looked perfect, it looked modern, um, and nobody was complaining, so why did we, you know, it's like sometimes people update services just for the sake of updating them, and, you know, brighter minds than mine understand the reasoning, I guess, 
but uh, I that doesn't mean that I do. Right? I still don't understand the reasoning for updating. But anyways, okay. So this is our nums initially. Okay. Now the answer answer of i is the sum of the unmarked elements in the array after the ith query, right? So what's our first query? Our first query is here, all right? Now, remember the query is the index here and then the k smallest elements, okay? So the first index we're gonna automatically delete is one, so this gets deleted. And then we're gonna remove the two smallest. So the two smallest, well, there's three equally small ones remaining, right? There's this one, this one, and this one. But the two, if they're equal, it says here, we're going to remove the smallest values. If multiple elements exist, mark the ones with the smallest indices. So the smallest ones are one, one, and one. And their locations that are the smallest are here. So then our answer here for this query would be two plus three plus one, right? right well, two plus two plus three plus one, right? Because the... The answer to the query is the sum of the unmarked elements. So the ones that haven't been marked yet are two and two and three and one. So that's two plus two is four, plus three, seven, plus one is eight. Okay, now let's go look at this uh, next query here. We automatically mark three, zero, one, two, three. One is already marked. All right, and then we mark the three smallest ones remaining. Okay, well, this one is definitely one, and then there's two twos, two and two. So now our answer is um, three, correct? All right, three, and then finally this one, we mark four, zero, one, two, three, four, and then we mark the two smallest remaining. Well, there's only one remaining, so we just mark that, and then now everything's marked, so our sum of unmarked elements is zero, and that's how we get eight, three, zero, like that, right? And right, this last example, right, we we're supposed to mark the two smallest ones, but there's only one remaining. That's why there's this idea. If there's less than K unmarked elements, then mark them all. So you just, just mark them all, okay? So... How do we handle this situation? Well, the only thing in here that's really difficult, right, is we, we look at each query. Right, well, all, we're, all we really need to do for this, right, is we, we look at all queries for each query. We look at each query. We mark the index. We find the k smallest, we mark the k smallest, right? So for each query, what do we do? We mark the index in the query, right? We find the k smallest elements that have been unmarked. We mark them and then we find the sum. find the sum of unmarked and then we you know we add that to our solution well, that's kind of implicit right so this this is very intuitive right this part so I'm not going to really explain this but like that's what we do right we look at the query that's just literally just like a simulation of the problem right that's what we just did logically I hopefully it's pretty intuitive right you look at each query you mark the index you try to find the case smallest things meeting the condition where they're the smallest and they're the earliest index and then you mark those ones too, and then you find the sum, right? That's literally what we did up here, right? I, I, see if I can use my hand. Oh, look at that, but I disappear into the blackness. No, so here, right? All right, what did we do? We looked at this query, then I marked them. Like I marked these two, I figured everything out, I found out the sum and I returned it. Then I looked at the next query, did the same thing. I started marking stuff, I found out what the sum was, outputted that. And then at this last one, I did the same thing, right? I said, okay, I have to mark four now. So I marked four. I looked at the two smallest ones, marked those, put the answer in, right? That's literally, that's literally all this is saying here, right? That's all this is saying here. I look at each query, right? I look at each query. I mark the index, right? There's an initial index that gets marked. I locate this K smallest ones. I mark those. I find the sum and I put that in my solution. So it's, that's pretty intuitive, right? Now, what would be the runtime of each of these things individually? We need to think about taking this, right? And this is a, a case that's true for a lot of problems, right? Which is looking at a situation and saying, okay, this is the brute force. What kind of tweaks could I do to make it optimal, 
Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes the brute force approach has nothing to do with the optimal solution. So trying to look at the brute force solution and tweak it and modify it and massage it isn't the best path. But sometimes, like this today, right, the, the best I, a way to approach this problem is to look at it and look at what is the brute force approach, right? What is the, what is the approach that um, is super intuitive and how can I tweak that? How can I massage that? How can I introduce a data structure or something to take that kind of slow runtime brute force approach and optimize it, okay? So uh, we'll, we'll analyze this approach using a brute force method, methodology, right? We have M queries, and there's n elements, okay? So this is gonna take m time because I have to look at all que m queries. Marking an index in an array is super easy, right? That's just gonna take O of one time, right? Because I just marked that index. Now, the way that we can do that, uh, there's, there's a couple ways, right? And we'll, we'll introduce that in a second. Now to find the k smallest, well, that's where this gets a little tricky, right? Because using the brute force approaches, I'd have to look at the entire array and try to find the k smallest elements, right? And you could do that in constant time. Well, you could do it okay, log k time, but let's just say for the sake of this, right? Well, I guess it would have to be OK log n time. Oh, no, it's backwards. Sorry. Right, so I have n elements, so I have to look at all n elements each time. Ugh. I have to look at all n, the reason why I don't really care too much about this runtime now, because we're going to have more optimal solutions. So I'm not going to spend so much time analyzing this, it might be a little bit off, right? But I have to look at all n elements, that's for sure, right? And then I have to do some sort of mechanism to find the k, lar the k smallest ones, right? So I have to look at all n elements to find the k smallest ones, right? If, you, if I want to know the smallest ones, within this array up here, right? What did I end up having to do? I had to like look at this and say, okay, which ones were the two smallest? So I have to look through the whole thing and figure out what the two smallest were, right? When I'm here and I'm trying to find the three smallest, I have to look through this whole thing to find out what the three smallest were, okay? Uh, mark the k smallest. Again, marking is constant time because I could just go through, mark, 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 and then find the sum. Well, this could be O of N2, right? Because I have to Look at all of them, look at all the ones that were marked, and then add those up. All right, so this whole runtime here is O of M times O of 1, O of N log K, and then O of N. So that's N log K. So then this whole runtime would be, I'm, I'm just going really fast here and doing probably some, uh, this would be M of N log K. Okay, so that's way too slow. Why? Well, if we look at our solution over here, right, um, in terms of our constraints, n and m are both 10 to the 5. So this is 10 to the 5 times 10 to the 5 times k, which is your elements k, and k could be also 10 to the 5. So that's five, 10 to the 5, 5 log k. 5 times 10 to the 5 times 10 to the 5, that's like 5 times 10 to the 10. So this is going to time out like crazy. So this brute force approach is way too slow. So what are some things we can do to optimize this? approach so that we have something that's you know reasonable right and again reasonable in the world of of programming is usually around and in the world of lead code is around 10 to the 6. okay uh first thing we can fix is this idea of marking all right so let's let's work on fixing this find the sum of unmarked elements all right and one little trick you can do is kind of like a prefix sum idea which is if we look at this example again I'm gonna undo all the marking. One way you can find the sum without having to resum every time is well, you know, it is true, right? It's true that I am stalling. This is a one here. Ugh, so messy. All right, this is a one here. You know. I'm going to do this very mathematically just, just for the fun of it, okay? The sum of the marked plus the sum of the unmarked equals the sum of nums, right? And what we're trying to find at each index is the sum of the unmarked, right? So that's what we want. The sum of the unmarked 
equals the sum of nums minus the sum of the marked, right? Because we always want the sum of the unmarked, right? We want the sum of the unmarked. Why? Because at every thing, right, we're trying to return an array where it's the sum of the unmarked elements in the array after that ith query, right? So if we pre-compute this, right? And then at each round, we know what we have to eliminate. We just remove that from the sum. We'll always have the sum of the unmarked in constant time. Now, if that doesn't make sense, what I'm basically saying is initially what I'm going to do is I'm going to say s equals the sum of nums. Right? s equals the sum of nums. So s equals 1 plus 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12. So sum equals 12. Right? So that's this arrow in here. So this is... 12 and then all I have to do is find out what I'm marking and subtract that from 12 and then I'll always have the sum of the marked and I won't have to keep re-summing through each time all right so here what I'll do is I'll say okay what do I end up marking automatically after off the bat I'm gonna mark one, the first index so I'm removing this two so I'll just remove two from my sum and I'll get 10 and then I'm removing the two smallest ones so that's one and one. So I'm removing another two, and that gives me eight. And now my sum equals eight. I know my answer is eight. And you might want to watch this twice, and then I can continue on. Now the next one I mark three. Zero, one, two, three. I've already marked one. It's already marked, so I don't want to subtract that again. But then I'm going to remove the three smallest ones. So I'm going to remove one, two, and two. So I'm removing five, minus one. So minus one, minus two, minus two, which equals three. So now my sum equals three, and now this is three, right? So do you see how that works? So I don't need to recalculate the whole sum, right? The idea here, right, in this code you can see here is, well, if I pre-calculate nums, each time I go through a query, I'll just continue to eliminate things that I marked, and that will be equivalent to what my unmarked value is. So I don't need to find my markings and then go through the whole sum again. I will just keep track of what my sum is, right? I'll find the k smallest elements, mark them, and then here my modified solution is, well, I'll just... Subtract marked from S. And now S is my new sum, right? So now I've removed that N statement from this, this situation, right? So now I can cross this out, right? So now it's M log K time because what I did is instead of summing through each time, I'll just keep a track of the elements that I've summed and each time that I mark things, subtract that from my sum and what will be left is the things that are unmarked and that'll be my, my answer S. So I can just roll through doing that process. I don't need to rehash this every single time, okay? So this would actually be O of K time, I guess, because I have K things that I need to subtract. All right, so that took me from problem with this k thing is if I'm removing k things I can only the complexity gets here weird here with k we're gonna make this o of 1 even though it's o of k because I can only remove at maximum n things so the sum of all k values has to be less than n so even though this is k here right I can only remove a maximum of n elements so the sum of all k values is less than n okay but just know that this is definitely faster because we don't have to go through the whole thing, right? We just have to subtract the k values, but you only do that once, all right? Because this is more like, with a k value here, this is more like plus n. It's so annoying with, with, with runtime like this, right? It's more like plus n because k, after all sums, can only be less than n. I'm not going to go deep in the analysis here, but it just, just understand that this is faster than what we just did, okay? Now, let's think about, can we increase the speed of this? We want to find the k smallest of something. How do you continuously find the smallest things remaining in something? That is a perfect candidate for a priority queue. Okay? A 
priority queue is the idea where you take a system and you put it in a, in a data structure called a heap where it constantly in log rhythmic time provides you with the smallest element, right? So instead of browsing through manually, why don't we take nums, turn it into a priority queue and start pulling elements out of the priority queue uh, when we need the K smallest, okay? All right. Um, so with a priority queue, do I want to, I'm thinking about, do I actually want to represent this and how would I even go about doing that? Let's, let's think about that, okay? So instead of taking nums like this, right, what we can do instead, we have to be careful though. Right, what we can do instead is we can take nums and put it into a priority queue. So we priority queueify nums, right? And then what nums will end up looking like is a priority queue like this. One, 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 two, 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 three. Do we ever add anything back to the priority queue? So would it be better just to sort? It doesn't matter. We just do it with a priority queue, but you could just sort it too. But, um, you know, so now when we do this process, right, when I say I want to mark one, there's a little bit of a stipulation here, right? Because if I'm marking this one, what does that really mean? We need to somehow in our priority queue signify, okay, I've marked this one. So this one of these twos, right, the two... Right, when I mark this one, right, I have to somehow signify my priority queue that I've already marked the two, so it goes away, right? And then I want to remove the two smallest ones. Well, instead of browsing through the whole um, array now, I just pull out the two smallest things in the priority queue. Right, I just pull out the two smallest things in the priority queue. Then when I go to the next one, I have to mark whatever's at three, zero, one, two, three, which is also a one. And then I just grab the two smallest things out of the priority queue, All right? So that happens in log n time, right? Well, I have to do it k times. So I have to do, instead of n log k times, it now k, uh, the runtime of this is annoying, log n times, All right? But k can only be at most all of n. So this is just log n time. So this would become O of log n time. Ask me if you want me to do a deep analysis of the runtime analysis of this because it's pretty complicated because even though k is a variable, k can't be bigger than the whole size of the array because you can only delete at most the number of elements in the array. So even if you have a k factor and k could be the size of the array, it, it can't repeat, right? You can only mark something once, right? You can only get the k smallest things if they've been unmarked. All right, so... This be basically becomes, there is a K factor, M log N, right? So we went from O of M, N log N, K something to M log N, right? Which is much more reasonable. All right, so how are we gonna actually implement this? Let's go to the implementation of this code and call it a day. This is, uh, maybe I should have taken a different approach of, uh, explaining this, but basically all we did to make this work, right? Is we just look at the brute force approach and we said, okay, Mark, try to, take the sum of the whole thing no make like a prefix sum idea and subtract out to keep track of your sum find the k smallest well if we want to find the k smallest uh continuously let's use a heap to do that okay so let's um let's write this uh let's write this bad boy okay so first thing i'm gonna do is take the s is the sum of nums right now i'm gonna make a heap out of the elements now what this heap is going to do is well how do we know when the next smallest thing well we said the next smallest thing was the smallest value and if there was a tie the smallest index so i'll take the value right as the one first value in my heap but then if there's a tie what's the tie breaker the index 
Okay, so this is a good way of grouping things in Python that allows you to sort based on multiple parameters, right? So this is kind of a clutch little trick, right? Because what happens is in the heap, it'll, it'll look at this verse value and say, okay, if that's the smallest value, then it's at the front. But if there's a tie, what value will be smaller? The index. So that'll sort things according to those two conditions, right? For value and index in enumerate nums. Okay, now we have to heapify this thing. So we say heapify, no, heap Q, it's a library to create heaps, heapify the heap, all right? And then what we'll do is we'll look at each query in nums. Now our query has a certain format, right? There's a index and a K value in queries. And then first thing we have to do is we have to mark nums, right? So we say, how are we gonna mark nums accordingly? Well, it looks that all the values are greater than or equal to one. So if we say sum of the sum is gonna since we're marking this index, we're gonna subtract it from our sum, right? Because our sum is initially all the unmarked elements. So since we've now marked nums at index, we're gonna remove that element um, from our sum because now that it's marked, it's not unmarked. So we only want to keep track of the marked. Ugh. And then to track that it's marked, we're gonna set its value equal to zero. Okay, so if the value is equal to zero, that means that it's been marked. So that's how we can account for things that have been marked. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to find the k smallest. Okay, so we're going to have k smallest here. And we're going to say while there's something to remove, so there's still things that haven't been marked, and k smallest is less than size k. So we're gonna keep trying to pull out smallest elements until we get all k smallest elements. We're gonna say um, the value of this element and its index equals heap q, heap pop from the heap. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Now, you might be inclined to say, okay, well then I just add that value Right, we'll keep the index of all the elements we're gonna, uh, all the k elements we're gonna pop, that we're gonna mark. You might be inclined to say this, but the problem here, right, is like, it's possible that you've already marked the element that you're about to delete. And what I mean by that is, remember in this situation here, right, when I marked one, I had to go into the array and say, okay, this two gets marked, so then over here, this two, can you see that? No, you can't. Right, when I marked this one, I had to make sure that I went inside this array and marked this two, right? Because this one, it corresponds to index zero, one, two. So I had to mark this two out to clarify that, okay, although I haven't pulled this element out of the heap, it's already been marked, so just to discount it, right? So basically what I'm saying is, if nums of index is zero, we have to discount this current element because it's not actually, it's already been marked. Right? If the value is zero, it's already been marked. So if nums of index is greater than zero, it hasn't been marked, so we can add it to our solution. But if it's zero, it's already been marked, so it's not one of the case models that we can consider. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Man, it's always interesting how problems are always much more difficult than you assume they are going to be, to explain at least. Okay. And since I've marked it now, I could say nums of... In no, I don't want to do that yet. Okay. So now I have my k smallest element. So I look at all my k smallest in elements, and then I just play this game. I say, okay, now that it's marked, I'm gonna remove it from the array. I'm gonna move it from my sum. And now that it's marked, I'm gonna note that it's marked by setting its value to zero. And then I'm gonna add this new sum to res, which will be our solution for each query. And then at the end, we'll just return res. And we'll walk through this code. It's not. It's <laughs> A little more complicated than, um, you know, some of the three-line solutions we sometimes have. So this would be the length of k smallest is less than k. Num is not defined. Nums, this is very common. There's low cost of getting things wrong here. You, you know, syntactually wrong is fine. This being wrong is bad. Okay. 
So let's make sure everything here is good, is dandy. So it's saying the answer is 875. What, how did he get five here? Oh man, guys. Ugh. All right, so how would you even debug this? So one good thing about debugging, right, is just walk through your solution and make sure every, every line makes sense to you at least. So I, I subtract out this index. I set it equal to zero. I look at the k smallest. Say, while I still have a heap to subtract from, and I haven't removed all k elements, I'm going to pop the value in the index. If it hasn't been popped yet, I'm going to add the index. I'm going to look at all the k smallest, subtract that from my sum, set the value of that to zero. So why is it five instead of zero? All right, so for each query, let's print out. So the logic to me makes sense. So let's look at um, k smallest is kind of the thing that grows and shrinks here. So let's see what that looks like after each call, right? And if that makes sense. So in the first one, it's two and two, index two and two. Index two and two, that doesn't even make sense. How can there be two of the same indexes that we're deleting here? So maybe this idea of using the same letters over and over again is messing it up. So let's see if that resolves anything here. No. Okay, so here it went through three times. It said the first value is zero. Ah, okay, because, oops. So this is the index and this is the val. Right, that's the order of which enumerate works. Oof. Que estupido yo puedo hacer a veces, huh? O estar, yo supongo. All right, apologize about that. So let's walk through how this works, okay? So basically, we take a sum because we want to figure out that the, the, the unmarked is just the sum minus the marked, right? We create this heap where we have both conditions, right? Where the smallest elements, that the k smallest we're going to delete is the val. And if the values are the same, it's the index. So putting it in this tuple accounts for that. We're going to turn it into a heap so that we can process it. We're going to look at each query. We're going to say, okay, we automatically have to remove the index, the element at the index, because we have to mark it, right? We're automatically marking the element at the index. We mark the element at the index, and we um, set it to zero to account for the fact that we marked it. Now we're looking for the k smallest elements. To find the k smallest elements is we look at the smallest things in our heap, but if they've been marked, we have to continue looking, right? So we find the k smallest elements this way, and keep track of the fact that things are marked. Don't, you know, remove them because they've already been uh, marked. And then we look at the case smallest and we do the same thing, right? So we look at the case smallest things and we say, okay, now that it's been marked, we subtract it from our sum to account for the ones that have been unmarked to only keep the ones that have been unmarked. And we mark it by setting it to zero. Okay. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So what's the runtime of this? Okay. So say N is the length of nums. M is the... 
is the length of queries. All right, now k k times anything as a sum is at most n. So we'll just keep k like this, and then we'll we'll work from it. So so summing nums that's going to take. Okay, so for time, let's do time first. Summing nums is going to take O of n time. Creating this heap, O of n time, O of n time, O of n time. We have to look at all O of m queries. We subtract an element, subtract, subtract. We look at k elements here, right? So we look at our heap, which is of size n. So we have to do log n operations, k times. All right, then we have to do k operations here. This is another plus k operations, right? Uh, okay, so for this, this would be O of m times k plus k log n. So k log n. All right, we do m operations. We do log n things k times. And we do k operations here. So this k log n scales over this k. So it's O of m k log n. Um, and that's it, right? Um, that this k is a little misleading because it's not k every yeah, m log n. I'll make a video explaining this if you really want me to. Let me know in the comments. It's just not worth my time. Plus O of m log n plus n because we have to do m here. It's super, super convoluted. All right, for space, we create a heap of size n. We heapify it. Um, we do have to create this thing for the k smallest. But that could be eliminated, actually, because we could just mark it each time we see it. This is actually kind of messy. So, But it's O of n space. Now, let's fix that right here. So technically, we don't need to add the index. We could just do it directly here, right? S minus equal nums of index. Nums of index equals 0. All right, we don't need to, I don't, now that I'm thinking about it, we don't need that, and it's going to help us save a little bit of space. Okay, so, oh, because I did that because I wanted to keep track of the numbers that I have. So k smallest equals zero. So while k smallest is less than k, k smallest uh, plus equal one. Because we still have to keep track of how many we've deleted. All right, so that's a little bit faster. Not faster, but, well, it is going to be faster, but it's not big O runtime faster, but it does save us on space. Okay, guys, terrible, terrible, terrible video today. Tell me how terrible it was in the comments. Say, bro, you're the worst. You're bad. But I tried my best, and uh, tomorrow I'll come at you with something a little bit cleaner.